Ah, yes, ah, you've begun recording. I have. How terrible. Uh, Welcome to Tales from the Gutter, episode two. Would you murder you? Murder Boogaloo? Murder Boogaloo! No, that's episode, that's, I suppose, the continuation of this. Part two. Uh, part part two, yeah. Which I'll have to make up somehow now. Someday, damn it. Oh, well, we'll charge for it on Patreon. That, Excellent. They'll, they'll, uh, it's totally a pre-planned thing, and you can watch it almost now. Hooray! Also, some other stuff. Also, check out our video uh, about uh, the Star Spangled Man that is currently uh, exploding. It has, when I last checked, over 800 views as of... 3 a.m. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, videos doing well on our channel equals more viewers for this. Yay! Yay! That's all I need to know. That's all, yeah. Anyway, and oddly enough, this is the stuff that uh, uh, when we start making money, it will come from this. Because all of this is content we own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so shake that money maker. Uh, today, we are going to discuss when fiction kills. Like, when something that is completely fictional, something that does not exist, actually lands a body count. I know War of the Worlds is supposed to have caused a couple heart heart attacks, but I don't think that's ever been proven. It it actually caused a lot less than people think. Mm -hmm. Um, There's this wonderful book... um, because I'm on the spot, I can't think of it right now. Uh, but it's it's we'll about call the research department and get back to you. Later. Oh no! Oh, it's called broadcast, uh, uh, broadcast or headline broadcast or something like that. Uh, and it's specifically uh, about the way that uh, uh, media drives itself, using that as an example. And so it, it's not that people panicked as much as people think. It's that people reported that people panicked, which mm-hmm. resulted in more people panicking or reporting on the panic and then annual retrospectives on the panic exactly so while some legend or true fact every year we read more about this garbage exactly so while some people in outside region uh, outside markets like um so so radio broadcasts used to be very regionally broadcast and that specific broadcast was made for the new york new jersey area um and it was then a bunch of easily panicked (laughs) <laughs> Fighty types, if there ever was, and it was it was then sold to to further markets in different time zones where they would place it wherever. Now, people in New York and New Jersey didn't actually panic; they were listening to the Mercury Theater. It was a planned show; they knew that this was what came on at this time. Oh, but out in the boonies, sometimes they just threw it on. And, yeah, well, exactly. And and the further you <laughs> got from its original time, like a, a broadcast time. Uh-huh the more it got out of place in how it was in the schedule. And the schedules of how radios worked were very precise. You knew that if you were listening at something at a certain time, it should be fiction or reality. Mm-hmm. You will hear a news broadcast at 20 past the hour. It's not unlike that on um, certain it, national broadcast number ones now. <laughs> exactly. But because uh, this show ran long and was out of uh, uh, sorts when it was delivered, a lot of times it overran the news broadcast while sounding like a news broadcast. That's amazing. So people, it's not that people believed that Martians were invading, but they would hear a snippet about something burning in New York, stampedes in New Jersey. So it may, it may fall into indirectly murdered by fiction. Exactly. Now there are, But only probably a couple of instances. I, I, if I recall, there was one confirmed from a heart attack... But that person was like, if you had shouted boo at them, they probably would have had a heart attack. Like, it, it was it was just coincidence, kind of. This is a very special episode brought to you by the Society for the Prevention of Yelling Boo at Old People. Boo! Don't you? Sorry. <laughs> one less listener. <laughs> anyway, but today's uh, is about confirmed kills. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, uh, of course, when, when you think of uh, people who have died at the hand of fictional characters or fictions, what pops to mind first? Well, I already gave you mine. What what does pop to mind first? To me, uh, the, the most familiar would be the assassination of John Lennon. Go on. So John Lennon was murdered by Ma- uh, Mark David Chapman. And Mark David Chapman is a really special kind of guy. Uh, uh, Mark David Chapman was obsessed with the book, uh, with J.D. Salinger's book, Catcher in the Rye. 
Have you okay. ever read Catcher in the Rye? I have not. It's essentially uh, uh, the, 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 the primary source of little shithead incel kids who think they're awesome, but everyone around them knows they're assholes. Is this Holden Caulfield? Yes, this yes, is Holden I've Caulfield. Yes, I've heard of this person. Yes. He, In he's... great negative detail. Exactly. Um, around the age of 12... I've heard that's a misreading and he's great. No, he's, he's absolutely the worst and that's the point of it. Is yeah. like, this kid's a shithead. Around the ages of 10 to, to 13 or so, um, usually straight cis boys really get into it if they do because it essentially just takes all of the feelings from that time and says no that's right Mm -hmm. even though much like a clockwork orange it actually is showing to everyone else oh here's what's wrong with you Mm -hmm. so it it, it's when you are in the wrong headspace for such a thing it becomes really dangerous and he's in the wrong headspace Uh, mark david chapman is mentally ill but in a really curious way Ever since a very young age, he communes with a community uh, in his head that he he talks to via a very large television uh, that he calls the Little People. Okay. And this is a a, a town or city. Uh, it's all set set out. The uh, every person has like a, a little unique individual like personality. He knows these people, and they know him. <clears throat> And they've always looked after him. The little people are really fascinating because the little people are are not malig- uh, like malicious. Mm-hmm. They've They're all... not like I hear voices that tell me to kill. No, no, they they like, usually there's a want... bunch of denizens in my head helping me along. Yeah, and they wow. they try to give him good advice. They try to give him debt relief advice, uh, for for exa- example. And they always try to look after him and and make sure he's well. Eventually, he started slipping, and he always started focusing around what Holden Caulfield called phonies. That's everyone in society who doesn't live up to whatever you think that they should. Okay. And at some point, uh, this concept of phony got connected directly to John Lennon. He was a massive Beatles fan when he was a kid, and the little people loved the Beatles. And at some point, uh, he read uh, an unofficial biography about John Lennon. That explained all the stuff that John Lennon does. Like he, he's he's homophobic. He beats his wife. Mm-hmm. He's he's a shithead. It's true. He was a shithead. No, I've heard all of this. Yeah. And it breaks him. It, 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 he's so disappointed. And he goes before the little people and, and and explains that I'm sorry. We've been betrayed. He, he's a phony. You know this this man that we thought was, you know, uh, uh, essentially the closest thing you can get to Jesus. And he's very religious. Uh, it was a phony. Uh, and so I have this plan. I'm going to go to New York and I'm going to kill the phony. I'm going to kill John Lennon uh, and, and t- it'll work out and good will be restored. And it's just, it's in the book. The book tells me that no one gets murdered in Catcher in the Rye. There's nothing That's like a that. a lot of megalomania and weirdness, but it gets... I'm hoping some of his little people told him to fuck off with that idea. That's the funny thing. Uh, because all of them collectively told him that that was a bad idea and that he should seek help. His psychosis huh. told him that he was being crazy and was actually gave him uh, uh, options that would have been seeking treatment. That's like a, such a helpful psychosis. That's such a helpful manifestation of mental illness right? in a way. Like, not in a strong enough way, apparently, but still. Well, that's the thing. Um, it eventually got to the point, like, he, 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 he went to New York, but he chickened out. Uh, he hired a prostitute and had her dress like uh, a character in Catcher in the Rye, and he just watched her. Apparently, he didn't have sex with her. Uh, he then went home, uh, and, and some, something else spurned a second trip back. And he, uh, uh, at, at some point before the second trip, he was talking to the little people, and they're like, listen, you, you went there, you didn't do it. You're good. You're good. You, we can pretend this never happened. No one knows that you were going to kill John Lennon. Everything's fine. Let's just go back to our lives. And he goes, okay, okay, okay. And then he gets the urge again. I have to go kill John Lennon. I have to go kill John Lennon. And his own delusional psychosis says, I can't deal with you anymore. And leaves. It's not that he's not crazy anymore. It's that the manifestation of his delusional psychosis... It's rejected him. Has He's rejected too crazy. Him. Yeah, and gone. Forever. 
He's had it since he was a child, and it abandoned him. So then what happened? He went to New York, and he he stood in line uh, to get uh, an autograph from John Lennon. Got it. Uh, John left. Uh, uh, he, he lived at uh, the Dakota, which is this enormous like hotel apartment building. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, so John left for the day to go uh, record uh, the, the last bit of Double Fantasy. Uh, obviously, the last bit he recorded. Uh, and he came back, uh, and uh, uh, Mark David Chapman was still there. He had been there all day. Um, but people had always hung out outside John Lennon's place. Mm. Like, there was always a crowd there, and it was usually the same people. These are all super fans, but they're all, like, they're, they're, they're all harmless. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he's, he's chatting with them, and he, he's reading a little more Catcher in the Rye, and John Lennon uh, arrives, uh, and he's signing some, um, you know, some, some more uh, autographs, and he apparently looks at mark david chapman and like there's there's that moment of like recognition from earlier yeah but then he turns around and like signs and starts heading into the room uh, to, to the building mm-hmm. and mark david chapman shoots him in the back that's cowardly yeah not that i'm not that i would approve of all of this had he shot him in the face or something but, but like but still it's particularly cowardly yeah exactly now i was being much more literal in my interpretation <laughs> of your initial question by the way <laughs> You're like, what's the top instance of something fictional killing somebody? And I was thinking, like, you know, like, a basically collector set edition of, what's a nice heavy set? <laughs> Every Danielle Steele novel, but done in hardcover, in extra large font. Like, what? And that falls on your head. One of those but if we're talking about, prop- like, books that inspired people to kill, have you heard of this little tome called The Bible? Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I, the I, I considered going into that, but then I figured, uh, let's let's leave this. That's preaching to an existing choir. Yeah, let, let, let's leave this, this show, this. presumably. But <laughs> so, uh, having but shot this is a nice modern day. Well, it, exactly. Nice one-on-one. I would have also accepted them. Um, what's his name? Um, who became obsessed with? Uh, uh, who wanted to shoot Reagan? Who did shoot Reagan? Because he was obsessed. Oh, with... Oh, uh, Mark Mark Hinckley, John Hinckley, John Hinckley, John Hinckley. John Hinckley. He was obsessed with. Uh, he was obsessed with Taxi Driver. Yeah, and what's her name? Uh, Jodie Foster. Yeah. Yeah, I almost include him, but because he has no confirmed kills, I did not. That's fair. Yeah. He was He was almost there. Yeah. Uh, now, having First shot... First degree wounding. <laughs> second, uh, uh, first degree wounding and uh, two counts of first degree wounding because he also killed... Like or shot now, uh, the other guy. Yeah. Um, anyway, anyway. <laughs> first degree wounding the other guy. Uh, first degree wounding That's not, not crime, Ronald, I've never heard Ronald of Reagan. You, you, you shot two bullets and only one went in Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> it's still charged with two counts. Oh my god. Um, anyway, so having shot John Lennon in the back, what would you think would happen? <clears throat> this is New York in what year? Uh, 1980, 81? Oh, Probably nobody did a goddamn thing. But, like... that Nobody did a goddamn thing. I mean, he sauntered away, and everyone was like, oh, no, someone's problem. M- more uh, more basic than that. If you shoot someone in the back, what do you think happens? I don't know. Mark David Chapman believed that John Lennon would phase out of this reality oh. and rejoin his copy of Catcher in the Rye. What? Yes. So he was surprised at a corpse? This is correct. Oh, my. So he sat down... Again, now you were being much more literal about Yeah, what well, exactly. So, I don't know, John Lennon went to hell? I have no <laughs> fucking clue. You tell me. So he sat down on the street, uh, uh, like on the stoop next to the body, put the gun on the ground, pulled out his copy of Catcher in the Rye, and read it until police arrived, expecting either the mob or the cops to murder him at any point. No one touched him. Why would the mob murder him at that point? Because he is surrounded by super fans and he just shot John Lennon in the back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No I thought, one did I thought anything. you meant the mob. Like the, the oh, mob. the mafia. Man, yeah, no. interpretations are all over this episode. <laughs> this is great. I, I almost had a mafia story included in this, but it seemed to be more just like Goombas enjoying Godfather rather than like Don Corleone killing someone in yeah. reality. So what else do we have? All right, we still got lots. Um, have you ever read Stephen King's Rage? No. Uh, so it's one of the Richard Bachman books. And I the... do read, listeners. <laughs> the Bachman books were... Uh, I'm going to tell you what. All kinds of newspapers from Alaska. Tons of newspapers from Alaska. 
Go on. Uh, the Bachman books were four books that Stephen King put out in the 80s uh, attempting to essentially avoid himself. Um, know that, of course, he was very, very drunk or high. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're, they're penned by or penned under the name of a guy named Richard Bachman who is supposed to have died and like his wife found these manuscripts. And they're Stephen King-esque, but they don't really occur within the Dark Tower universe. Okay. And uh, They're one... essentially non-canon Stephen King, then. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and uh, one of them is, uh, Rage, is about a, a school shooting. Now, this was written in the 80s. Uh, it was released... I believe it was originally released by uh, under Bachman in the late 80s, but it became revealed in the mid to late uh, to early 90s Uh-oh. that it was Stephen King. Okay. And so, you know, like, they started really selling. Yeah. Because everyone's like, ooh! Stephen King does a school shooting. Uh-oh. That's not... I- exactly. I can see why he used a pseudonym for that one. Yeah. Yeah, and it reads... And I can't even say maybe don't write about a school shooting, because, like, what is that show that's done in Quebec in English and in French, the cop show, that had that fucking crazy, like, oh, one massive gosh. long take for a lot of its school shooting thing. Yeah, uh, I, I can't even remember uh, the name, but it was really it was really good. The research department is going to be going into overdrive in the notes for this episode. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> but yeah, no, so you, okay, it's fine to creatively express that, but I can see it getting negative attention. And not only kind of... negative attention, but it is, it is the urtext of school shooter insane rambling stories that if a high schooler wrote it, you would definitely have them sent to the cops or something. It is basic revenge fantasy. It, it, that sounds healthy. It, it's not even re- well written. It's, it's straight up revenge fantasy driven by addiction that takes the form of a school shooting. Okay. It led to four shootings. <laughs> I should love that. Now, uh, only two of them uh, had fatalities, so I'm going to ignore the first two, but they were legitimate... St- School shootings and a hostage taking. Oh God! How bad were the other two? Uh, the other two had a combined f- uh, six kills. Yikes! Three each. Uh, Barry Lucatus killed a teacher and two fellow students. Where was this? Uh, that. Where was that? I didn't write down any of the places. These are in America. Yeah. They're see, I always just associate. There's so many; it's hard to keep track of. So you got to remember the towns. And most of these, if not all of them, are in America. Well, yeah. Uh, and then... Yeah, but fiction, bad fiction's the problem. The, yeah, yeah, bad fiction's the problem. <laughs> bad fiction's not part of the solution. <laughs> but it's not... I don't think it's part of the problem. It doesn't help, but, no. you know. <laughs> uh, and Michael Karniak killed three, uh, 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 people, uh, three students in a prayer group in his high school. There's a couple of wounded with each of those, but those are the f- confirmed kills. Six people were killed... By a Stephen King book. That's that's quite direct blame, but in that no, one, like, that's Steve, kinda... Stephen King's even like shit. Yeah, I have I I, I believe it's out of print now, uh, and uh, those two attacks occurred in ninety six and ninety seven. Man, can you imagine what it feels like to be an author and like that's like you know at best you want your work to inspire people, at worst you just want to make a quick buck, but like the consequences of either can be fucking dire jd salinger has oh, not been seen in public in decades after he wrote catcher in the ride yeah yeah not until bojack horseman not until bojack horseman nice. um we've got actually there is there is one he didn't shoot anyone he i believe he strangled them after beating them to death bored he, and he's canadian Oh, good. Yeah. Edmund Turner, uh, Mark Overdrive, Twitchell. sorry. <laughs> Edmund Turner, Mark Twitchell. It sounded was... like you said Edmund Turner. Edmund Turner. Uh, he was... I can up... see why they have a hard time for those <laughs> captions on these. No, it's great. It's wonderful. <laughs> uh, he was a movie buff who was obsessed with Dexter. Uh, and he liked really? to make his own movies and TV shows. Yeah, he was obsessed with Oh, Dexter. I've heard of this guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember being annoyed because I was like... First of all, like, we don't need that kind of publicity in Canada. <laughs> but also, like, you're going to be inspired by a show that bad to murder people? Mm. You shouldn't be inspired to murder people, obviously, but you definitely shouldn't be inspired to murder people by Dexter. But here's the really cool thing that people miss about him. He wasn't inspired by Dexter to murder people. He was inspired by a movie he shot himself. He planned and wow. created his own That's fiction. so Canadian. That's so gross. Yeah. 
Um, oh, so narcissistic, just navel-gazing your own way into insanity. It's about a man who is making a movie, much like himself. He was, he was trying to launch a, a, a sitcom or a film series. Uh, he also made a, a Star Trek fan edit uh, uh, that never got off the ground, but like he raised oh, like $60,000 for or something. Okay. Uh, so he was, he was a scammer, but he was uh, predominantly, he, felt him, he thought of himself as a movie maker. And so he wrote a movie about a movie maker tricking, uh, becoming a murderer, but choosing to only kill bad people and tricking them using plenty of fish uh, to come uh, to, to his movie studio where he would murder them. And when that didn't really get off the ground as a project, shockingly, he created the same profile as the murderer did in Plenty of Fish. <laughs> Lured in a guy. Uh, his name was one second Johnny Altinger, a lonely uh, oil worker, uh, and beat and strangled him to death. Oh. The guy actually escaped uh, because uh, the the first time uh, uh, because uh, uh, like the attack was mistimed. But he uh, and and uh, uh, and Mark Twitchell told him. That oh I'm I'm just waiting here. Um, she'll be here soon. I'm I'm like her brother or something. Uh, sorry, that I wasn't <laughs> like trying to I wasn't something. trying to attack you. That was a mistake. The guy left, got a text from the girl, quote unquote, and he went back. Went back and got murdered. Well, not to be unsympathetic, but that's real fucking dumb. Yeah. Yeah. And he had the whole place set up like on Dexter when Dexter's gonna murder someone. So plastic everywhere. And the guy walked into this and was and, and was like, I just got attacked. You've got all this set up. There's no girl here. Yeah. And then he comes back to I'll that. I'll be right back. Yeah. And so that's how he got murked. That's a really kind of embarrassing inspiration story, though. Correct. Like, I'm so I'm such an artiste that I was inspired by this crap by show. Myself. Admittedly starring an actor I love, but not for that role. Mm. Inspired by this, not this crap show, but my take on this crap show. Exactly. My Canadian... How awesome am I? ...take on this really bad show that went really far south from not a place that was super far north. What a motherfucker. That's... Oh. <laughs> um, oh, special... <coughs> I, I made a special uh, um, rule for this one. So the, the victim survives. But it's just so fucking crazy that I had to. Okay. Have you ever heard of the Slender Man? Yes, but I don't know why. Okay, uh, probably just from, like, memes and shit. Maybe. Go on. Uh, so the Slender Man is a, a pale figure, very tall, in a black suit that uh, hides, like, creeps up on you from behind, usually in the woods, and it, it uh, uh, can be seen in, like, photos and, and uh, video, like, creeping up on people. Uh, mm. uh, you know, in the background. Ugh, I uh, hate this so much already, you have no idea. <laughs> it was created as part of a contest on the Something Awful forums to just make creepy photos. <laughs> okay. And so someone simply came up with something that more or less looks like Jack Skellington out of focus, creeping up on children. Uh, at some point, either uh, uh, inspired by or just coincidence, uh, a film company that eventually became Red Letter Media made a movie that was more or less about Slender Man, but it wasn't called Slender Man, and like it was just a guy in a suit okay. with features. But a lot of the things that uh, all of the characteristics of how Slender Man behaves and stalks and like the mythos came from this movie. And uh, as as it slowly built up on the internet, like about fifteen years ago, uh, people were adding more and more things until you got a completely publicly built urban myth that like you can add or take away whatever you want and it's legitimate to like it, that that's what slender man is and or does anyone can use slender man anyone you can make uh there's no copyright on it this is great and so in 2014 uh 12 year old girls morgan geyser and anisa weirer decided to stab peyton lautner another 12 year old girl to death in sacrifice to Slender Man, to Slender Man, who they Man. believe was real. Well, that's pretty dumb for twelve. Correct, but at the same time, like <laughs> that's pretty fucking terrifying. Yeah, holy shit! They lured her into the woods, held her down, and stabbed her nineteen times. 
a cyclist came by, spooked him, and she got away and survived. The spike. The cyclist spooked them. Yeah, yeah. The the crazy spooked little cyclist them? girls in the woods. I stabbing. would be squealing like a younger than twelve year old <laughs> child running the opposite direction, biking the opposite direction. Oh, really. biking so fucking fast. Oh my god, that's terrifying. She survived. She survived. She's alive, and they are in mental institutions. Presumably for a very long time. Probably for a very long time. Oh my they God. are very delusional, dangerous people. This one is my favorite story by far. <laughs> this is so grim and awful, and Slender Man just like I don't like the concept already. Oh, it's the the video games. I walk through right, woods a lot. I live in Canada. Terrifying. Sometimes you have to walk through woods to get places. Oh man, yeah. It's, a, it's Canada. They're always fucking creepy. They're always half dead, old like Jack fucking pine and firs and. Dark shit. Slenderman video games Bears are around so every corner. terrifying that they make other video games that are perfectly peaceful there. about nature. Yeah, because you're just like, no, no, I I think I just heard a sound behind me. I know that there's no That's awful. I, we're in never game. going hiking together because we would just be, exactly. I would be the worst. If just, shit, fuck, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Something behind you. <laughs> just turn around and look at you when I'm ahead of you and just look really terrified. Say nothing, just let the color drain from my face. Oh, no, no. Before you turn around, I wouldn't be there, so you'd just find yourself alone. <laughs> you'd just be there, but you'd <laughs> pull the giant mask down over your face. <laughs> be so great. So great. If you could play the, like, violin oh, shriek to make sure I'm scared. Somehow get that on the phone and just... Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> I would die of a heart attack, and you could make another episode about this. <laughs> uh. <coughs> oh, a perfect part two to this. Hmm. What fiction has inspired the creation of life? Ooh, yeah, that's Guaranteed there's a ton of non-porn fiction that's inspired <laughs> some procreating. That's going to be a hard one to search. Yeah, yeah, that's... Well, it's... <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of, uh, I'm will, more I can't imagine where this is going. Uh, speaking of porn inspired murders, real simple one though. Uh, uh, I, I can't think of a segue, so I'm just going to pretend that we had one. Now I'm trying to think if there's ever been a porn inspired murder. Uh, yes, we will get to those. Not today, but we will get to the point. <laughs> There's a great murder. teaser episode. Oh my god, there there are some really fucking terrifying ones. And the guy who was the main character in Hogan's Heroes. Who's that? I can't remember his name right now, but he was a prolific pornographer in like the fifties. I look. I like to think that you're just saying that not as pornographer, but pornographer, like an E U I, like like yes, as in like, like you know, auteur, like a an auteur. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Uh, anyone who's familiar with the story will just be like, yeah, no, that sounds about right. Perhaps. That's that's great. Um, uh, do you re- uh, obviously you know you, you remember the '90s and you remember mm-hmm. that eh, film Scream, like the whole Scream series. I loved it. Oh, come on. I loved it. They were it. bad. Yeah, but it was fun bad. <laughs> well, it wasn't so fun for a couple of people. <laughs> <laughs> this is an excellent segue. In two different events, uh, uh, people in relationship with uh, uh, two people, Mario Padia and Thierry Gerardin, found themselves being stabbed to death by their lovers Wearing the scream outfit. Why would you do that to anyone, let alone someone you claim to love? The stories never really went like, into Like, not only do far. I just want them to die, but I also want them to be terrified in their final moments. Yeah, yeah, and that, like, uh, 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 only one of them is known as the scream murder, oddly enough, but both of them are, are people fully dressing up and stabbing them to death, knowing full well that the other has seen the movie. I want you fully to die in a horror movie fashion. I want you to feel that. That's hateful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not even sociopathic. There's emotion behind that. That's holy shit. Um, I, I, wow. Uh, if, if, you, if you like that, uh, I didn't write this one I down. Do but I do not like that. That is intense. <laughs> I didn't write this down, but I, I did read it, and uh, uh, the, the victim survived, but it's a, it's a play on that, and it was after watching Interview with the Vampire... Uh, the next night... My face has just changed dramatically. Yeah. Uh, a husband turned they to his wife face. and said, I'm going to drink your blood. And started biting and stabbing her and drinking her blood. A for commitment. <laughs> a plus for committed. Committed. That's fucked. Mm-hmm. I do, again, it's like that guy inspired by his own take on Dexter. Like, don't be inspired by... Especially if... Okay, did you say watching or reading? Uh... 
either I'm disappointed in, but were they watching? Watching. Interview? Okay, that's watching. Even worse. Yeah. I, I had to think about which one. Minute. Which one was it? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Parking... It's always Tom Cruise's really? fault. Really? It's always Tom Cruise's fault. Yeah, he doesn't even feel bad about it. He's not even like tortured, emotional Brad Pitt. Kirsten. Kirsten. Uh, yeah, what the fuck's her name? Kirsten. <laughs> God, sometime we have to do an episode of the Pop Culture Podcast about. Uh, we should plug that. What's it called? Oh, uh, please. Won't you shut up? That's the one. About uh, that actress and that goddamn terrible Virgin Suicides movie. <laughs> Fuck! People get mad at Sofia Coppola for ruining one of the Godfathers. Fuck that! Virgin Go watch Suicides that and then get mad at her. Uh, but I love. Um, I digress. But now I'm still really moved. Yeah, but no. Yeah, well, Forget no. Well, yeah, that, that's the thing. There will there will be an interesting discussion about Sofia Coppola. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, we're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> we almost haven't done. digressed completely, despite my best efforts. We are now entering the darkness, though. Who do you think... We haven't been there yet? No. It's pretty gruesome. Oh, yes. Who do you think has the most kills? What fictional thing has the most kills? <laughs> not religion. I'm not pointing heavenwards, I swear. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, fictional thing. Yeah. Which, not heavenly. That not has heavenly. the most confirmed kills. Yeah, and it's um, it, it uh, it's less than a hundred years old. Oh, yeah, uh, and I'm not counting like like Book, people go to we? war for. Yep, yeah, people go to war for things and all that. But this is direct. I'm killing in the name of this. So this isn't thing. like you know, Mal's little red book tells you to go exactly. To war it's kind not. Of it's thing, not. Though. It's not a fiction told as a truth. It's not. It's not a manipulation. Oh, that was well. That was a good turn of phrase. Oh, thank you. Okay, I understand that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's a book. Is it a North American book? It is. It has its origins in a North American book. Uh, I'll need a hint on this one. I cannot imagine. Uh, it's still extremely popular, and you would, like, if you thought of the character, you would not be surprised. I don't know, but I'm, I admit I'm... Like the audience, I'm on the edge of my seat, fascinated to find out. The Joker has at least 12 confirmed kills in the real, uh, real world. No! I was going to ask you earlier if there are any comic character-inspired kills. This I'm. It's wrong to be happy about that, but like, I love me some Batman, and the Joker's fucked. Okay. And, and the fact that he's so evil, he actually has real-world kills. Wow. Yeah. So now, now there's also a lot of other crimes that are attached to him, and and that's kind of <clears throat> kind of typical of the Joker. Is sometimes he's a murderer, mm-hmm. sometimes he's the 1960s kind of like weird little scamp, or sometimes he's robbing banks or some mm-hmm. shit. He's like often that. robbing banks. Exactly. Sometimes he's holding you know Gotham City Council hostage. It's whatever he's all feeling. Sitting on bombs. <laughs> all sitting there's on usually bombs. Usually a train involved. Some of them sometimes might be it's fake. Christmas. You never know. Now, not counting Heath Ledger, who. It's believed drove himself, ac- well, accidentally committed suicide by overdosing on sleeping pills because he couldn't get the Joker out of his head. That's, I've heard that too. That's pretty fucking intense. Then again, ev- okay, all this concept that actors, when they really immerse themselves into a role, they, yeah. they actually, the brain activity in the part of your brain that centers on your core identity actually diminishes. It's get, it gets subsumed a little bit. Yeah. That was a very good performance, and that character is fucking twisted. Yeah, and and, and, and I'm not the, saying it's implausible. The cherry on top of that horrible cake is that unlike other actors who who who, who live the character and shit like that, yeah, um, he developed his version by locking himself in a hotel room for a month and writing in a diary that is now in the possession of the ledgers, and they won't let anyone else see it. It's the Joker's diary. It's an in character. See, that's just a bad idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a terrible idea. I can see, of course, that would totally twist you. Yeah. The Joker is that twisted. So it's... it's, it's, I don't want to be proud of the character, but, like, you got to think it's quite an accomplishment to write a character that can inspire so much twisted activity. Exactly. That's fun. Like, you came up with something that is capable of actually doing what it does in fiction. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Uh, so, but not even if we're not including him, that there's still a twelve point, uh, like a twelve person body count. But first, some lighter crime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who knows what Jeremy Putnam was up to one day when he was found wandering the streets of uh, Winchester, Virginia, dressed like the Joker with a claymore. 
That's not very Joker-esque. He was arrested multiple times for doing this, and he would always claim that he wasn't going to threaten anyone or wasn't a lunatic, and that he just liked it being again. a Joker and holding a claymore in public, wandering around threatening people. He should have been arrested for such a weird juxtaposition. The Joker would never use a claymore. <laughs> that's so weird. Is the Joker going to put on a fucking kilt that matches his green hair and use that's a claymore too? That's a good point. I'm not down with this. Uh, he should have been arrested. Yeah, so well. Exactly, and in uh, in the end, he got charged with uh, one of those anti riot laws because he had his face covered. Oh wow! I don't know how to feel about that. Complex, yeah. Well, yeah. exactly, because it's like mm, you're you're clearly nuts. But yeah, mm. I want him to be arrested for that. That's weird. Uh, this different poor choices <laughs> in the first degree. You want to see poor choices? I'm gonna get you to Google something in a second here. <laughs> poor choices in the first degree. God knows what that will get us. Mm-hmm. If it's this podcast, I will be so offended. <laughs> I'll get it, but I'll be so offended. Now that was that was relatively unthreatening. Relatively unthreatening. Uh, it was more like the hint of menace. Uh, that's unlike Florida man Lawrence Patrick Sullivan. I want you to Google Lawrence Patrick Sullivan right now. Right now. Okay. This is gonna be bad. See, Lawrence. Pa- Lawrence and Patrick for, let's have a moment for Florida man while I look this up because like everyone goes on and on about Florida man. Florida man only exists because Florida publicizes everything. Yes. Like all of their records are terrifyingly ridiculously open yeah it's, if that it's happened in nova scotia there. can you imagine oh my god nova scotia man would happen immediately uh, <laughs> what is this particular lawrence, florida man's name lawrence patrick sullivan nothing like if you had a public in new brunswick right oh hey. my god love you new brunswick but you fucked up okay there he wow is. those are tattoos oh they're bad he has permanently tattooed his face to look like the joker but it doesn't. It does when you get closer up. Uh, there's also like uh, I think jokes were on on you is written. Oh, that does. There's that's fast. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to keep this guy up there. Oh yeah, he's super creepy. Uh, he has. He's well known to police. That's shocking. Uh, he likes to threaten traffic with a gun, and he has been arrested <laughs> multiple times, uh, especially on violating parole for carrying concealed weapons. And possibly selling arms. Again. I was looking to see if he was like, I don't know why, but I was expecting him eventually to be like, joins dances with the stars or something like that. <laughs> like, something like, he's turned himself around. He still looks like this shit, but still now like he's that, dancing yeah. with, I don't know who, Mario Lopez is a person. Let's go with him. They're during the cha-cha. That'd be a great team. That would actually be awesome. Part of me would want to applaud that there's like a same-sex team on there, because I don't, I don't pay enough attention to know if we've reached that milestone yet. Part but that's not how like, I want to reach it. This might be terrifying, and he might kill someone on camera. If it was like a much like more adorable Joker and Batman duo, then that would be great. But that's not adorable. That guy fucked. Yeah, yeah. Now, he, he's fucked in that he's... He, he's threatening, but he's not following through with threats. He, he there's that's no, not what he's fucked. Uh, yeah, don't put it that way. No, no, it, it's 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 you're it's fucked if building. you don't actually do it. It's building to levels of crime. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So the next guy, Christopher Fuentes, liked to dress up as the Joker and attempt to rob dry cleaners in Texas. So he's committing well, robbery. He's committing a robbery. That's that's more in character. But he never killed anyone. That's good. So that's good. Damien Hammond of Nor- Nottinghamshire terrorized the police for months. Terrorized of the police? He intentionally thing. targeted the police wow. to scare them with vandalism, criminal acts of damage, mischief, and harassment, including ta- sending them like taunting messages as they tried to investigate and catch him, all while dressed as the Joker. I can't imagine the effect this would have on the morale of that police department. Like <laughs> the, the Nottinghamshire Police Department. You're just in the middle. It's, it's like hot like, fuzz, but suddenly so, you're the fucking Joker. Like, so frustrated and angry and like, you know, a little disturbed, but at the same time, like, oh my God, I'm being targeted by the Joker. I am living in, in the Batman verse. Like, <laughs> it's like one part of you is like driving around like, me. It's like what, having having that happen once is one thing, but the day you come in and there's another report of the Joker's at it again, yeah, and then he you sends you a shot, message, it's not like blam, like it's just, what the fuck? It is distressing, yeah. yeah. And and then the targeted message is directly to you, yeah, from the it's just okay, we're done, yeah. He was eventually caught and that's tried all on very basic stuff, very the Joker though. Exactly, it's it's criminal mischief. It, yeah. Yes. 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 
That's the Joker. That's his. That's that's his autobiography. Exactly. And then, of course, as is inevitable with the Joker, the jokes turn serious. Mm-hmm. We're no longer having fun. And that happened on the night of the premiere of Dark Knight Rises in Aurora, Colorado. Oh, was that guy Joker inspired? He he called himself the Joker. Oh. He was inspired by the Joker, and he attempted a half-ass get-up under his armor because he was fully body yeah. armored for this. He shot 82 people in Jesus. that theater of a Batman movie, killing 12. Effectively giving the Joker the highest body count in reality of any fictional character. See, and uh, okay, obvious disapproval aside, I also disapprove. Because that is not in character for the Joker. The Joker, for all you want to say about right, the Joker, he's a, he's a real shit be, Joker. Like the Joker is a terrible person. He would destroy a city of millions of people just to piss off his gay crusader enemy he'd here. Gas a theater, but he wouldn't go in with a. He wouldn't gun. poison gas a theater. Oh yeah, well it would. They'd all die from the Joker toxin, but like they. Oh, like you didn't get shit. to them in time. Like they yeah. would be like, you know. <laughs> If you had one competent, like, you know, police commissioner, then you'd be... Oh, God. The whole it's Aurora, die. Colorado. I was thinking locally, but... Oh! Uh, I don't think we have anyone right now. We're going to have to talk about no, that technically, we, technically, we don't. Yeah. No, yeah. We should plug that one. Uh, watch the industry is doomed! That's the name of it. It's it's not that relevant to the show some days, but it's <laughs> yeah. still a good show. Uh, <coughs> but no, that's out of character. Like, you don't... Yeah. The Joker would not walk into a movie theater and mow everyone down. It's like, that's the funny thing, is all the other ones... Are actually kind of in line with the Joker, like that, that e- British e- one. The British one <laughs> is perfect. On. Oh Joker, God, even awesome. even hoodlum Joker is even like Jared. Man? Yeah, he's Jared Leto. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit. You know, it, plus it's... he's fucked his face up, and that's that's totally pretty fucked. much. Do you get more Joker commitment than fucking your own face up? <laughs> not really. Do people in general like or not like him? For that is is that like hard commitment or are they I just like oh that, look that at would you. be no I would presume that that would be a deterrent in prison people would look at you and just be like this is not Arkham Asylum I am not that level of crazy I am I don't want to not only do I not want to fuck with you it's not necessarily that I'm afraid of you I just don't want to interact with you at all your universe and my universe feel like if they came into contact <laughs> there would be a loud angry hiss and everyone would be uncomfortable this was best not to happen and we should back away i want to see someone do this with a different villain like i want to see someone insist that they are mr freeze and go to prison and be like i need a cell that is below zero i don't know what is wrong with my brain as soon as you raise the concept of someone emulating another character it was like real life angry homicidal strawberry shortcake <laughs> <laughs> no please bitch pudding bitch pudding bitch pudding uh, I feel like that's a natural end. It, it's, it's a good end. And we're out of content. Uh, Yay! Check us out on YouTube and Audio Boom and iTunes and get out! The next episode will be content brought to you by me. Hooray! I don't have to do anything. It's going to be Archie Comics somehow. <gasps> yes! This is good. Oh! Oh! Uh, yeah. I'll, Wait, there's more. Uh, no, I'll fill you in on a start for that. But we will get to that next episode! That was so mean! Yeah, I, I have something great to tell you next time. <laughs> ah, yes, oh, you've begun recording. I have. How terrible. Uh, welcome to Tales from the Gutter, episode two. Would you murder you? Murder Boogaloo? Murder no, Boogaloo. No, that's episode, that's, I suppose, the continuation of this. Part two. Uh, part part two, yeah. Which I'll have to make up somehow now. Someday, damn it. Oh, well, we'll charge for it on Patreon. That, Excellent. They'll, they'll, uh, it's get... totally a pre-planned thing, and you can watch it almost now. Hooray! Also, some other stuff. Also, check out our video uh, about uh, the Star Spangled Man that is currently uh, exploding. It has, when I last checked, over 800 views as of... 3 a.m. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, videos doing well on our channel equals more viewers for this. Yay! Yay! That's all I need to know. That's all, yeah. Anyway, and oddly enough, this is the stuff that uh, uh, when we start making money, it will come from this. Because all of this is content we own. (laughs) 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 So shake that money maker. Uh, today we are going to discuss when fiction kills, like when something that is completely fictional, something that does not exist, actually lands a body count. 
I know War of the Worlds is supposed to have caused a couple heart heart attacks, but I don't think that's ever been proven. It, it actually caused a lot less than people think. Mm -hmm. um, there's this wonderful book. Um, because I'm on the spot, I can't think of it right now. Uh, but it's it's we'll about call the research department and get back to you. Later. Oh no! Oh, it's called broadcast, uh, uh, broadcast or headline broadcast or something like that. Uh, and it's specifically uh, about the way that uh, uh, media drives itself, using that as an example. And so it, it's not that people panicked as much as people think. It's that people reported that people panicked, which mm -hmm. resulted in more people panicking or reporting on the panic. And then annual retrospectives on the panic. And, exactly. Yeah. So while Urban some Urban legend or true fact, every year we read more about this garbage. Exactly. So while some people in outside region, uh, outside markets, like, um, so, so radio broadcasts used to be very regionally broadcast. And that specific broadcast was made for the New York, New Jersey area. Um, and it was then so a bunch of easily panicked 